Like many games which are based on movies, it can always be a bit of a mixed bag, and Beverly Hills Cop is a perfect example. Upon starting the first mission, the fact that Axel Foley is bald and bears no resemblance to Eddie Murphy is an instant red flag. If the developers couldn't even go the extra mile to gain the rights to his likeness, as well as the original theme song, you know you're in for a rough ride. Now, it's essentially a first person shooter that is broken up into a series of missions that take place in and around California. You'll find yourself visiting casinos, harbors, and warehouses, and as varied as some of the locations are, it's all severely hampered by one glaring issue that the game presents, and that is its speed. Seriously, this is one slow game, and for something that's based on one of the funniest action comedies, you'd think they would have actually focused on this area during development, but what you get is uninspired gunplay that feels more like a shooting gallery, along with dull and at times awkward dialogue that does nothing to help out the situation. To make matters worse, it's incredibly linear as well, which results in the feeling that you're just constantly being shuffled along without much to do other than what you're told to. Overall, Beverly Hills Cop is a game you should avoid at all costs. For anyone wondering if it's a diamond in the rough, no, it's just mud at the bottom of a sandpit, with annoying controls and a set path that may as well have been placed on a rail system to progress through the game. Even for diehard fans of the movies, this game is not worthy of tracking down even for the collection. Should your curiosity get the better of you, you will be highly disappointed. Why does this even exist? That's the question I kept on asking myself whilst playing through Little Britain for this video, and the only conclusion I could come to was that it was designed to trick people into buying something that will most likely result in PTSD. There are absolutely no redeeming factors to this game, to the point where even fans of the actual TV show will have a hard time making their way through it. Now it's all split up into several minigames that star all of the characters from the show. You've got roller skating, diving, whack-a-mole, and a few others that round out the selection on offer. The main issue is that there is just no substance to any of them, and to make matters worse, most of them are just cheap knockoffs of far more successful games. For example, one sees you running around a supermarket trying to consume as much food as you possibly can. But after about two seconds, you'll clearly see that it's just a Pac-Man clone, an awful, awful Pac-Man clone. There's plenty of these examples throughout the game, which strips any originality from the experience. To top it off, the controls for some of the minigames are absolutely frustrating and are hard to get used to. For instance, the Vicky Pollard level involves you spamming the X button to skate along and the square button to jump over obstacles. What makes it worse is that the jump button is incredibly delayed, as it takes about one second before Vicky can actually jump when you press the button. The gameplay for lots of the minigames is just way too repetitive, and the main objective of each doesn't do much to help, as it's just to simply score as many points as you can, in the hopes of unlocking several clips of the show. To be fair, you'd be way better off just watching an episode, instead of subjecting yourself to this hell. Basically, it's a pile of shit, and I've subjected myself to it so you don't have to. Now when it comes to fighters, the PS2 was home to an incredible amount of respectable games, but for each good one, a shockingly terrible one released as well. There's no better example than Legend of the Dragon, which shares its name with the cartoon. It's largely based around two twins, Ang and Ling, who are on the opposite sides of a martial arts conflict that involves humans having the ability to transform into beast-like creatures. It all sounds a bit like Bloody Roar, but comparing this pile of wank to that game would be a huge mistake. Everything is just incredibly basic, with only one punch and kick button and very simple combos that string those two attacks together. There's no sort of special moves whilst in the human form, which makes trying to transform your only option. Once you have, your basic abilities don't change. You can still attack, but now you can take advantage of your power meter and unleash special skills that feel like they have been ripped straight out of Dragon Ball Z. From energy beams to fireballs, this is the only part of the game that feels remotely interesting, but it kind of devolves into a button mashing frenzy, which means there's no real skill in pulling any of them off or linking them into combos. Because of this incredibly dull system that doesn't even play well against computer controlled opponents, let alone actual humans in multiplayer, it seems almost impossible to have fun with Legend of the Dragon. Do yourself a favor and leave it well alone.
As the name suggests, God Eye Elemental Force is a game all about the elements. You've got earth, wind, water, fire and void. Which after some time of the game you'll start to feel the most comfortable with the fifth element, void. As much like the fifth element on the PlayStation 1, this game is void of any sense of entertainment. It sees you taken on the role of hero, some sort of ninja who's out to enact revenge upon those who killed his family. It's all pretty mediocre, and the narrative never does anything that you haven't seen a thousand times elsewhere. Now I wish I could say the gameplay makes up for it, but it actually just makes it worse. It's essentially a beat em up, and of course with Hiro being a ninja, you would expect him to be well versed in martial arts. He has literally one combo that you might as well get used to, as you'll be using it over and over again throughout the game. Hiro has got another neat move though, he can jump all at a stunning 15 frames per second. The levels which are all based on the elements themselves are actually quite nice, but unfortunately it's soon forgotten due to the constant collision and camera issues that plague the game. And after four levels of horrid and boring fights, four uncreative and fairly unimaginative bosses, you'll unlock the fifth level of boredom, the void. At this point, you'll just quit pretending you care and throw God Eye to the side like the trash it is. Whatever you do, do not pick this game up. It will likely ruin your life. Charlie's Angels is just dire, there's no better way to describe it. With it coming off a legacy of several decades, you'd think a bit more passion would have been put into the project, but that was clearly the furthest thing away from the team's mind. First, the storyline. A bunch of famous landmarks have been stolen. You've got the Statue of Liberty, the Eiffel Tower and fucking Big Ben. Just trying to wrap your head around the logistical nightmare that would have to take place for this to even happen is only half of the struggle, as when the gameplay starts you'll just wish you'd never been born. The gameplay is flawed, bland, uninspired and above all else, shit. It's a 3D side-scrolling beat-em-up with endless streams of generic enemies and seemingly pointless combos that have no rhyme or reason. The fighting moves are pretty standard with kicks and punches making up the base attacks but with throws and grapples stepping in for the special moves. It might sound alright but the fighting scenes are terrible when playing thanks to the sluggish movement of the angel you're controlling. All the punches you throw are easily blocked and grapples are countered with ease, ending up with a lot of frustration, broken controllers and sore thumbs. Now one of the main reasons why the game is so bad is that most reputable beat-em-ups take place from a 2D perspective. Of course, Charlie Angels makes the jump into 3D, which isn't necessarily a problem, but if you don't have enough time implementing a decent camera system, it will all fall apart. And with Charlie's Angels, you'll spend more time fighting the camera than the hordes of thugs attacking you with spanners. Trust me, save yourself and don't even bother with this one. After the somewhat train wreck of a film that was Catwoman 2004, it was fitting that we'd receive a game that not only equaled its big screen counterpart, but in some ways even surpassed it. Now even the sight of Halle Berry in skin tight leather could not distract from the absolute shit show that we received. And much like the film, it sees the player taking up the fight as Patience Phillips, a lady who is murdered but then resurrected by a Persian cat and given cat-like abilities. You soon set off down a nonsensical, transparent and unclear path to ultimately decimate those who were responsible for her death. Now, the biggest swing and miss here has to be the fact that Catwoman is painted as a victim. As many will know, she's usually portrayed as a villain, and having her relish in her antics, or perhaps on the run from the law, would have been far more fun to play than just another cliche revenge story. When it comes to gameplay, the situation only gets worse. Naturally, you'll find yourself having access to a range of actions, such as wall climbing and a string of fighting moves. But what stops it all dead in its tracks has to be the god-awful control setup and camera. Nearly everything you can do within the game is mapped to the analog sticks and shoulder buttons, from acrobatic moves to using your whip, and it is simply a mess. Whereas most games have the foresight to actually use the face buttons, instead the folks over at Argonaut gave zero fucks and decided to implement what has to be the most infuriating control scheme I've ever experienced. Couple this with the camera, which at times makes it nigh on impossible to even figure out what the hell is going on, as it begins to sway violently and obscure your point of view. What you're left with is an unplayable clusterfuck of a game that isn't even worth the disc it's printed on. 
I was one of the lucky ones who missed out on the whole crazy frog craze. Well, not so much missed out as successfully avoided it, but going into the racing game on the PlayStation 2, I approached it with an open mind. And with being a huge fan of Mario Kart, I thought it would at least be slightly enjoyable. But I was wrong. So wrong. Unlike Mario Kart, Crazy Frog Racer 2 stars a cast of entirely charmless characters that take all of the good ideas from Nintendo's racer, misunderstands them completely, and then tries to recreate them. As you would expect, there's a fair amount of vehicles and items to use in the game, which are meant to make it fun. But with half of them being broken and not really serving any purpose at all, you'll likely find yourself just relying on the boost, as many of the weapons have no reach to them. When you couple this with the god-awful controls, what you're left with is an infuriating mess, which often results in the player constantly slamming into the walls, regardless of your skill level. I could go on, but summing this game up is easy. It's it's every bit the lazy cash-in that everyone expected it to be, and it got released just in time for Christmas for any unsuspecting parent to buy for their child. It is completely broken, and just plain dull and irritating to play. If you're looking for a solid racer on the PlayStation 2, this is not the game you're looking for. Both Bad Boys 1 and 2 are two of the best action movies of recent times. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said for the game which is based on them. Miami Takedown continues the story on with the player following Mike and Marcus as they head out to take down a series of drug lords and shoot a bunch of bad guys in the face. There is genuinely nothing more to it than that. The biggest insult, and very much like Beverly Hills Cop, is that none of the original actors reprise their roles for the game, and instead we are treated to two of the most pathetic sounding voice actors to ever grace your speakers. The issue is they try to emulate Will Smith and Martin Lawrence to the point of being almost offensive, and to top it off the actual dialogue sounds like it was written by a four-year-old, whereas the films were made up of witty banter that worked incredibly well between the two characters. The game tends to just throw in as many profanities as it can, as if it was trying to meet some sort of quota, and to be fair, it just becomes obnoxious after a while. On the gameplay front, the campaign is largely split up into a series of missions that sees you utilising a wide range of weaponry to achieve your objective, from standard pistols to machine guns and grenade launchers, though all of them have an annoying tendency to just become useless when it comes down to it. This is mainly because of the hit detection, which in all honesty is just straight up broken. Your only hope is to go for headshots, as if you hit any other part of the body, it's anyone's guess as to whether or not the shot will actually register. Another huge part of the gameplay is the cover system, which on its own isn't a bad idea, but its implementation is shoddy at best, mainly due to the fact that half the fucking time you can't even snap into it. Once you are and aim a shot, popping out of the cover completely throws the reticle off, which defeats the point of having a cover system in the first place. If you're looking for a competent shooter, there are so many other great examples available on the PlayStation 2 that really deserve your time when compared to this complete shit show. If there was one word that could sum up Crime Life Gang Wars, it would have to be jank. Nearly every aspect of this game suffers from this issue, from the general gameplay right down to the visuals and music. It shares much in common with the likes of State of Emergency, but seems to have been produced on a shoestring budget. You'll spend most of your time roaming around city streets and engaging in random fights with rival gangs. There is a mission system in place that deals out money to the player, and allows them to take over certain parts of the city, which does come with various benefits, such as backup and commanding several gangs members at once. Unfortunately, the basic combat is where it all falls apart. There is just no strategy, and it soon becomes a test of patience, as you constantly pull off the same combo, block, wait for your opponent to attack, then rinse and repeat. When you couple this with the amount of characters on screen, many of them being your teammates, and the lack of a reliable lock-on system, it soon descends into absolute carnage. As you run around the city streets, you'll probably get confused as to what you're supposed to be doing as well, as there's no real list of objectives, just an electronic inbox, with each inbox message giving you a task to complete, but it's easy to miss something, since many of them contain multiple objectives. The lack of clarity on what the hell you're even meant to be doing really hurts the game. In some instances, you'll actually be told where you need to go on the map, but with others, it's like they forgot to add the waypoint. This lack of consistency is everywhere, and overall makes Crime Life Gang Wars a game to avoid. 
25 to life is just appalling in every single way. It must have felt like a full on kick in the teeth to anyone who got suckered into actually buying it at full price back in the day. The story is so horribly cliched, predictable and full of stereotypes that I'm sure your IQ will actually lower as you progress through the game. Now the gameplay is oddly similar to the likes of The Punisher and is presented as a third person shooter with several stealth elements thrown in for good measure. Unfortunately, stealth is completely useless, as the enemies will more often than not know that you're hiding behind the wall, even if they didn't see you. That's in contrast to when sometimes you're shooting at someone and then hide behind a wall, only to find out that when you did that, the enemy completely forgot about you. Speaking of inconsistency and horrible AI, how is it that sometimes enemies have godly aiming skills and have 100% accuracy at about 100 meters away, and then at a later level they shoot at you like a blind drunken sailor. It doesn't make any fucking sense to me. People take a magazine or two before they go down and before that bullets don't affect them one bit. The main character himself can take two Molotov cocktails to the face and still be only slightly phased. Inconsistent is the best word to describe the game and because of it it soon becomes a real pain in the ass to play. The visuals are nightmare inducing with several issues such as stuttering and frame drops that make the experience even worse. To be fair you should pick it up just to laugh at it, but don't expect anything else. Well that does it for today's video, keep an eye out for part 2 as that will be coming up very soon, so don't forget to hit subscribe and tickle that bell. You can follow me on all of the socials to stay up to date on future videos, and you can also join our growing community on Discord and meet many like minded gamers to continue the conversation with. I'd like to give a special shout out to our Patreon supporters Rhino, Skill Jim, Nano, Steve, Richard, Amy, Daniel, NSG Reviews and Paddy J for their continued support that helps make these videos possible. If you're interested in joining our Discord or supporting the channel through Patreon to gain access to exclusive videos and giveaways for as little as $1 per month, you'll find all of the links in the description. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch the video, I'll catch you next time.